In today's video, we're going to create a landing page for a wine company in Adobe XD. That's today's web design tutorial. Let's go ahead and get started. To get started, I have a 1920 by 1080 artboard, a normal web size artboard, and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my grid and we're going to use the 12 column default and I'm going to go into the opacity and just drag that down just so we can see through it a little bit better while we're working. We're going to leave this on a little bit. So we want to be able to see what we're doing. In today's website, we're going to be building is for a wine company. So I've went into Adobe Dimension and I've created a number of different renders of several colored wine bottles here for a company called Vega Wines. So this is what I have from those renders. If you're interested in learning more about Adobe Dimension, I'll pop a card on the screen now. You guys can go watch my intro to Dimension. And I have several tutorials using Adobe XD and Dimension together. So you guys can check those out as well. I will be providing all of these images in the project file. For those of you who are members, it'll be available in the community tab. So make sure you head over there and download that if you want your design to look exactly like mine. So that's what I'm going to be working with as far as all of my assets go. So let's go ahead and start with the setup of our website. So let's go ahead and lay that out now. Since we're going to have a number of different sections, I'm going to grab a rectangle and drag it out the full width and height of the screen. So 1920 by 1080. Then I'm going to go and select the artboard itself and drag straight down quite a bit just so we have enough room for now. And I'm going to go ahead and grab that rectangle and fill it as a gray color and we can remove the border as well. So we're going to have a number of sections. So I'm going to go ahead and lay those out. So we're going to have the landing section up top, the hero section. So I'm going to hold alt and grab that rectangle and just drag it down. And we'll change that to a different shade of gray. If we're thinking in terms of the CSS grid, we're going to have a box here, a box here, and then a large image over here on the side, something like that. So I'm going to drop this down 200 from the first rectangle just to give it some space. So when we scroll, we don't immediately go into the section. And then following that up, we'll do a large section. So I'm gonna hold alt once more and drag down. And we might have some different variations of the wines. So showing off the three different colors we have here. Each of these is gonna be a different year. So we're gonna have that probably in a card layout. So we're gonna need this to be a bit larger. So I'm gonna drag this to around 1450 if I can get it there, just as a good placeholder. And again, we're gonna make sure we have 200 spacing in between these sections just so they're not too close and then i think finally i just want to add a call to action so i'm going to grab the hero and drag it down and i think i want this one to touch the bottom of this section and we'll leave it at 1920 by 1080. the last thing we're going to have down at the bottom is our footer so let's just drag out a rectangle and we'll set the height on that to a good size about 140. And then i'm going to select that hold alt and you can see it's 291 from the bottom of the artboard so let's grab that artboard and go to the height and subtract 291 to make that line up perfectly at the bottom. So if we look at what we have, we have our hero, then we're going to have another section that tells maybe a little bit about the product. We're going to show some of the different versions of the product. Then we're going to have a call to action and then our footer. So let's get started with the hero section. So let's go ahead and lay out our links on the right and our logo on the left. So I'm just going to start with the links, type out some junk text, and I'm going to zoom in here to the top right. And we're going to be using Poppins font. And for our links, we'll go with a size of 16, regular weight. And then I'm going to drag this to the right hand side. So the farthest right column and align it to the right. And we'll change the text. So we got place in order, hold option or alt and drag out a duplicate. And let's do about 60 spacing in between each one of these. I'm going to do currently shipping for the wines that are currently available to purchase. And finally, vintage wines. Next, I'm going to grab one of these texts. Doesn't matter which one, just hold option or alt and drag over a copy. And we'll put this one on the left side and align it to the left. I'm going to change this to say Vega wine and uppercase it. And for the logo, I think I use Babus. So we're going to go with that. And we'll set that to a bold and bring it up to 26 in size. Then I'm going to click and drag to grab everything, hold shift and click the background to deselect it. We're going to vertically align these centered and then we'll check the spacing from the top and set it to about 75. 
So we have some good breathing room up there. The layout here is gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna drag a text area out and have some text here on the left-hand side. And we'll set that to Poppins. And let's go with 80 for the font size. And we'll set that to a medium weight. Just gonna lower the line height to 96, just to make it a little bit lower. And I'm gonna double click on the bottom point there to make sure that snaps to the text. And we're gonna line this on the second column here on the left, and we'll go one, two, three, four columns wide for the font. For now, we're not gonna worry about how it positions vertically, because we're gonna put a button below that. So I'll drag out a rectangle, and we'll say place in order, and lower that back down to 16. And we'll leave that at medium weight for now. With the rectangle selected, I'm gonna hold Alt and decrease the height to about 70 in size. And same thing with the width, holding Alt as we drag in to about 280 wide. With both of those selected, I'm gonna make sure it's perfectly centered. And then I'm gonna drag it to our second column here and place that about 50 below our heading. With both of those selected, I'm going to center them into the hero section, just like so. And then we're gonna be using an image of the wine here on the right hand side. For this text, I'm gonna make sure this is center aligned and I'm gonna set it to uppercase just to make it pop a little bit more. And we can go ahead and remove the border on that button. Next up, we have the section telling about the vintage wines here. So for this, I'm just going to drag out a rectangle and I'm gonna make sure it is half of the height and width of this section. Then I'm gonna hold Option or Alt and drag out a duplicate. And then I'm going to drag this to half of the height of the section. And then Option or Alt to create a duplicate. So that creates this layout where we have one square here, one here, and one on the right. For now, I'm just gonna change the colors so we can see the difference. So we'll set this one to white with no border. Then we'll set this one to a darker gray. And then here, we'll set this one to a pure black because we're gonna have an image here. And just so we can see a little bit better, let's grab the artboard and let's set it to a black color of 1C, 1C, 1C. And then I'm going to delete the rectangle here for the hero. I'm also gonna grab this button and I'm going to group it with Command G and turn the padding on. So if we adjust this text, it's automatically gonna scale. And I'm gonna hold Option or Alt to drag out a duplicate. And then we'll just drag that down into position in our first kind of card here on the left. We're gonna line that on the second column here on the left. And then we'll add a heading. And for this heading, we're gonna go with 50. And we're gonna line it to the left. And for the line height, we'll set that to 60. Again, 50 spacing in between the button and the heading. And then I think I want a smaller heading up top. So we're just gonna type out 2014 vintage. Since this is the vintage wine section. And with this, we're gonna make this pretty small. So I'm gonna set it to 18 and then I'm gonna set it to uppercase. And we'll just stick that on top of the first heading, holding shift and hitting the up arrow for 10 point spacing in between that and the heading. Then I'm gonna grab all three holding shift and make sure that it's vertically aligned center into this section. For this white section here, I'm going to grab the heading holding option or alt to drag down a duplicate, making sure it's vertically centered here. I'm gonna lower this down just slightly to 35 points and we'll set the line height to 52. Just gonna grab some text, paste it in and let's convert this to a text area and just drag it in. So we're gonna set this to one, two, three, four columns wide. If we double click there on the bottom of that point, it's automatically gonna snap. And then we're also gonna set the paragraph height to the same as the line height, 52. And then again, I need to double click on the bottommost point. And we'll just drag that into place. Moving down to the next section, here we're gonna show the wines currently shipping. So let's grab a heading for the section. And we'll bump that up to the 50 point font. And I think we had medium on that as well. We did. And we're gonna center align that to the artboard. And I'm just gonna align that about 150 from the top of the section. Then let's grab a rectangle and drag out a card. And we'll set this to 410 wide. And for the height, let's go around 620. 
And then we're gonna center that into the section, hold the alt or option and drag out a duplicate. And for the spacing here, let's go with 60. And then we'll do the same on the other side, selecting the center one, holding alt or option and dragging out a duplicate and putting 60 spacing in between them. I'm gonna select all three of the cards holding shift and we'll position them right below the heading. And here, since they're right below this heading, it doesn't look as good. So I'm gonna actually drop it down 70. So just a little bit more spacing than we've been using throughout the design, like here with this button. Uh, but I think visually this will look a little bit better. And then I'm gonna add some text below each one of these at 35 for the size. And we'll put that 30 below it and make sure it's center aligned. And we'll put them below each one of the cards. And then I'm just gonna change the text. Once we have that, I'm actually gonna drag everything in this section a little bit further down. And then for the final section, we're gonna have a call to action. So the easiest way to create this is just to go up to the top, grab our heading, hold shift, grab our button, hold option as we drag out a duplicate. Then we can set the text to center line and center line it to the artboard and then just center line the button as well, 50 below that. Then we can just change the text, hold alt or option while we drag out the width to just a good size, something like that. And then we'll reposition these together and center them into the section. And finally, the last thing we need for our wireframe is gonna go with a simple text set to 18 at regular weight. And we're just gonna put the copyright for the company and then center that into that rectangle. So with that, we have our wireframe for this design now done. So I'm gonna select this and I'm going to hit Command D to create a duplicate. And I'm gonna change this one to wireframe and then we'll change this one to design. Let's go ahead and select the artboard and turn off our columns. That way we can see our design a little bit better. And let's go ahead and add some color and some images to this. So the first thing for this section, I'm actually gonna keep the black color here. So we're gonna grab all of our type and fill that to a straight white color. And then for the button, we're gonna change the text to the same color as the background, which is 1C, 1C, 1C. And then on the rectangle, I wanna go with a pinkish color. It's the one I'm using in these photos here. So I just went over to dimension and grabbed a sample of that color. And with that rectangle selected, I'm gonna paste that in. The color code on that is FFA9A3. And let's go ahead and open up our assets panel and add that color to our swatches. Then I'm gonna drag out a rectangle that's 1920 by 1080. And I'm gonna send it to the back holding Command Shift, left square bracket key, and remove the border. Then I'm just gonna go into my assets folder and drag in an image of our wine bottle here on the right. It's this image that I'm using right here. And just like that, we have went from our wireframe to our finished version of our hero section. Let's go on down to the next section. And here I'm gonna select all of these rectangles and remove the border just by unchecking that check mark. And here I'm gonna set the small 2014 vintage and this heading to a white. Then I'm gonna update our button. Let's fill this to white for the text. And then for the background, we'll set that to 1C, 1C, 1C. So we have this black button. Then I'm gonna go grab the blue color that I'm using, and that is 5C95FF. And we'll fill this background to the blue color. I think that looks pretty cool. Then for the text on white, we'll just set that to 1C, 1C, 1C. And then I'm also going to make sure we add those to our assets panel. Then I'm just gonna drag in a cool looking product photo. So we have our wine bottle there with kind of a circle in the background. I think that looks pretty good. And then we'll move down to currently shipping. Here I'm gonna select all of the rectangles and make sure I remove the border. And then I'm just gonna drag them in order. So the 2013 is this brown bottle. And then I have a 2014 with the pink background. And finally, one in blue for the 2015. Selecting all of the text in this area holding shift, we can convert that to white. And we'll add that color to our assets panel as well. And then here I'm just going to delete the 
rectangle around this section. And for our call to action, I've created this pretty cool image with these wine bottles on each side. So I'm just gonna grab that and drag it in. And our button, this time let's change it to blue with a white text. And then for our heading, we'll change that to black. And finally, the footer is gonna be black with white text. And let's go up to the top. Select this, go to prototype tab and set that to our flow and we'll just call this main flow. So now if we hit live preview, this is our website for Vega wine. We've got our hero section, the vintage wine section, currently shipping, and then a call to action with a footer. So that's gonna do it for today's Adobe XD tutorial. And I just wanna let you guys know that I'm actually gonna be taking this and building this as a website this week using a no-code tool called Editor X. And I've wanted to try it out for some time, so I've actually partnered with them to bring you guys a mini series building this exact website this week. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. I hope you guys enjoyed today's design tutorial, and as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.